Tired by the Beatles. My next guest knows all about that because he's the author of the book Stop Waking Up Tired, The Beginner's Guide to Sleep. Delighted to be joining me uh, live on the line from Cardiff Bay, believe it or not, uh, the author of Stop Waking Up Tired, Ralph Montague. Morning to you. More good morning to you, Ralph. Morning, sir. Good to be here. Hey, yeah, good to have you with us. Uh, good night's Good night's rest. Of course, pretty much every night, but I, I would like to say every single night, but um, th- there's the odd occasional thing that does get in the way, which is what uh, the, the book's all about, really, just ways to keep you asleep. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because today is uh, World Sleep Day, and the that that's well-known organ of the media, the star, had a report on generation, what they call generation, were saying that... Uh, but uh, 18 to 24 year olds, 17 percent of them enjoy little naps in the afternoon. They're they're tired than their their older counterparts. I'm not surprised at all. Uh, I as a in my teens, twenties, thirties. I'm I'm now 42. I never once slept or napped during the day. It was just unheard of. But with all this digital technology, the bright lights, they they're just in bed, doom scrolling for like the last couple of hours of their day. And not only is the bright light, the blue light, horrific for your melatonin and allow you to sleep, I actually think what potentially is even worse is the stress it's causing them because it's alerting their brain to these new stimuli. And all of a sudden they think, oh, is that person prettier than me? Has that guy got bigger muscles than me? So it's just like this continuous stimulation. <laughs> I could go down funnier so, things, but I'm conscious of the the viewers. <laughs> so what indeed? So what? Um. So w- what's the background? What what gives you, if you, in the nicest possible way, uh, what, what is your back? I mean, obviously we all sleep, but is it something that's particularly interested you for uh, for a while? Then this one, oh, massively. So this is my third book and the second in the stop series of ways to help improve your health and general well-being so years ago i used to love partying and when i say love partying i probably had the most insatiable appetite to party in the entire world however i was acutely aware <laughs> that's a bold statement i <laughs> right i'm gonna say i remember, i just warn you now that i am based outside of my bear so i, just I realized may have that as, exactly. I, as i said okay perhaps the second most insatiable appetite in the world there we go how, how does there that you say? go fantastic exactly yeah so i was just like this is devastating my sleep my productivity what what can i do and that's where the first book stop killing yourself a beginner's guide to living longer came about literally as a book to myself my own personal notes because i was conscious that i could be looking haggard and die early if i didn't overcompensate for all the partying and then it just as i've got older and, and wiser i've realized that the most important thing that we can have as humans whilst on in this form that we are is how you feel within yourself when you're by yourself and if you're not getting a good night's sleep you don't feel great in yourself and it, you can have all the money in the world but if you don't feel good in yourself what is the point very very good indeed now i as i said before uh, i'm based in spain and spain is the land of these there are several things that spain has brought to world culture the tapa the cafe solo but also of course the siesta and we talk about taking small naps as if it's a bad thing but of course you know grabbing uh people say oh he's having a, he's having he's having a nap but you know the the 10 minute power nap of an afternoon has been shown to be a good thing yeah and Though not my expertise when it comes to napping, because it literally because it just doesn't interest me, and I believe there's better ways to do it. If I'm perfectly honest, but I am aware that people do get good results from from napping. The key with a nap is to keep it within set parameters, generally around about 20 minutes, and you don't want to be going into full blown sleep cycles. Because if you wake up during when you get into the deep sleep, which is non REM or rapid eye movement, non rapid eye movement you then wake up groggy and that feeling. So it's all about getting the timing right. But if you sleep well, you don't need to nap. I have Mm. bundles of energy. If I sleep well, I go the whole day up flying on all cylinders. If I don't sleep well, then this like writing, creative work that I do, I just don't bother doing because my mind hasn't got the capacity to do it. 
So how, how important is it then before you to, to set parameters? So like you said, I mean, you called the, the doom scrolling, but yeah, I mean, we've got our laptops here. Our, 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 sorry, our part, you know, our, our handheld devices, yeah. you know, our phones before we go to bed. And the temptation is, is, is to get into bed and just have a just have a little see what's going on. And that, that is fatal, isn't it, for oh. a good night's sleep? Well, there's two things here. Uh, you shouldn't have a TV in your bedroom. It's like inviting a load of students into party for the night. It is just so disruptive to your sleep. So like that's one of the, the big things, TVs. Like I when I stay at friends' house, I'm like, what? You got a TV? Get it out. In your bedroom, that is not TV in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you, I get you. Don't worry I just about that, realize, yeah. yeah. And then the Well, I'm still recovering from having a bunch of students partying in your bedroom, well, but there you go. Yeah. So <laughs> and then when it comes to devices, one of the things that uh, I actually set an alarm to go to bed. So I have three alarms, which, again, people find most bizarre, but it's so effective because I have an alarm to remind me in about an hour and a half, hour to hour and a half, that I'm going to go to sleep. None of this is fixed rigid. This, these are like good guide uh, frameworks, guidelines. And then so I have an alarm to go to sleep, uh, telling me I'll be going to sleep shortly in around about an hour, hour and a half. Then I have another alarm saying, get into bed if I'm not already in bed I've got another half an hour and then I have the alarm that lights out so by doing that that gets you into the habit and now as soon as you start going onto these phones you get distracted half an hour turns into an hour into two hours and you're still awake and again you need to calm you need to calm your brain don't you because oh. there's we all get the night frights you know we all wake up at two in the morning thinking about something that we said when we were 17 no. or the fact that you know oh that bill's not going to be paid and my life is over and what i'm doing you know, existential crisis at two in the morning is is a real thing yeah so that that is uh, really amusing because when you're asleep or kind of during the night there's certain functions and parts of the brain that are turned off so your logical thinking mind where you go okay that girl when i was 15 didn't want to kiss me and then you're panicking and then obviously in the day you're like well i don't really care i never liked her anyway <laughs> so there's like that change in concept uh, and and the key thing is when you're asleep during the middle of the night is to say to yourself what i'm talking about now and worrying about is rubbish don't think about it go to sleep and then you wake up in the morning and go ah oh, yeah it was rubbish so that's a really <laughs> good way now diet and in, in everything the two the two things in every aspect of our our busy 21st century lives it always comes down to i'm not talking about don't worry i'm not talking about your chakras ralph so don't worry about that but what i am talking about is diet and exercise because those are the two things to lead healthy happy lives and your diet and exercise will help you sleep indeed but actually we've been fed this myth that exercise and gym culture is the most important if you're not sleeping it doesn't matter how often you go to the gym yeah looking good there <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it doesn't matter how often you go into the gym so really number one not for everybody, but for nearly everybody, because if somebody's on a horrific diet of high, highly processed food, sugar, then obviously then diet will become more important. But generally, sleep is numero uno. It is the number one. So before you can think about exercise, not saying exercising is not important, it is highly important, but sleep is number one, then diet, then stress, and then exercise. So we, we place this in a wrong order. I appreciate yeah, that. That's my opinion, but based on a lot of work now food food and drink before you go to bed not i mean i've i've so i you know when i when i was younger you know i could have i could you I know, know i, I could have say, a chili yeah. i could have a chili pizza you know or whatever yeah. or the you know or the ten or the ch I was going to say the 12, 12 midnight kebab. But I mean, the number of times I woke up in London next and the only thing that was snuggling up to me was a half eight kebab. That's another story. But it's, it's a killer. If you, if you eat late, then you, you, you're asking for trouble. Massively. In fact, that's one of my number one pieces of advice when it comes to sleep is do not eat late. So I will actually leave a four hour window between my last meal or last bite and the time my head hits the pillow. A lot of... I. To get people into the habit, I will say two to three hours, but I'm, I'm really thinking, actually, no, you need four hours. But one of the things with habits, you need to start slowly. So if you're eating an hour to two hours before bed, perhaps start to get into a consistent habit of two. Then once you're happy with that, then move it back half an hour until you get to three and a half, four hours. It makes such a difference on your deep sleep, which is the restorative 
really high quality part of sleep and then going back to the rapid eye movement the rem and it really is quality not quantity and eating late at night stops that quality uh anything that will not now we we all should know by now alcohol is a couple of things it will knock you out sh- for a, a short amount of time but then you'll wake up at again two in the morning with a parched throat and, and a terrible need to go to the toilet i mean it's really oh. you know and, and booze you know booze is not a good idea before bed well would you know the irony so after this i'm driving to cheltenham to go to cheltenham races where oh, i'll be drinking blimey. On I mean, St. Patrick's am, Day. Right? On St. Patrick's Day. And my book You're just on asking for Saint trouble. Patrick's Day. So would you believe, I, I'm, I don't like to sound hypocritical because of what I'm going to be doing later, but alcohol is, I've accepted I will have terrible sleep and I'll have terrible sleep tomorrow night. But then mm. that's the consequence because I want to see friends and go to Cheltenham. But I know yeah. I'm paying a big price, not financially, I'm paying a big price in my well-being. But, however, having said that, you can, because we've all, there are some times where you just can't get to sleep and you just go, okay, fine, it's five in the morning now, I might as well just get up and get on with the day rather than lying in bed, you know, thinking about that 15-year-old that I had when I was 15 about top trumps or something. I can't remember his name, it's Lucy. <laughs> well, it's, oh, right, fair enough. That's yeah. actually, I actually, uh, uh, the girl I think about is Lucy as well. Whereabouts we were you in, in, whereabouts were you in the late, in, in the late 80s? Anyway. <laughs> Moving swiftly onwards, um, but you can, if you do get a five-hour sleep, you get a blip in your sleep pattern, you can kind of do it the next day. And, and, and I'm not saying that you should, you should uh, immediately think that, but if you lose, if you, if you break up your sleep pattern once in a while, it's not going to, it's not going to be destructive to your, to your health. Uh, and and that's, that's the, the big thing is just don't worry about it. Relax if you have a bad night's sleep. Yeah, so what? Some days you'll have a bad day in work. Some days you'll go to the gym and not feel it. It's just life. I I occasionally have bad night's sleep and you just accept it and move on. If the, the key thing is, though, if you want to keep a consistent sleep pattern, which is key. So I went to bed late. I was speaking to somebody I hadn't spoken to in a long time. So I went to bed at half 12. My normal sleep time is half nine. So I deliberately cut my sleep short, got up around about the same time I normally would. I was exhausted come that evening, but it just meant I was back in my sleep. And I'm happy to sacrifice a few hours of productivity for that one day for the rest of the, the week to go well. Now, if you are part of that mobile generation, if you go to your your app store or whatever, your pod, you will find a plethora of podcasts saying these relaxing sounds can help you get to sleep. And it's something tinkling in the forest and this American voice saying, picture a beach and all that stuff. Are they any good? Do, do we recommend? Do we recommend? Um, is it good to have? I'm not saying you should be playing most well, you should be playing my takers, nothing wrong with that. But if should you be playing something to distract you to get that active wearing mind if you have? So, you know, either either, you know, the I mean again, if you have the relaxing sounds of the ocean, perhaps you will be waking up at two in the morning for a pee again. But uh something that takes your mind off that isn't intrusive and that um whisks you to that favorable land of nod. Oh, you've just brought me on to one of my favourite subjects in the world. And before I start, I do not work for an air conditioning company or a fan manufacturer. So one one of the best things you can buy for your sleep, I keep one in my boot for when I stay at friends as a backup. I have one at my parents' house. I have two at my house as a backup if one goes wrong, is a fan and air conditioning unit. These are just amazing. Now, most people have a fan and air conditioning because it keeps you cool. Not me. Yeah. I have it because the noise, that white noise, gets you to sleep so quick. It's incredible. I love that. Then it, it just doesn't even stop there. The next thing is it stops noises during the middle of the night. So if you've got, uh, we'll go back to the drunken students. They seem to be on my mind since it was two uh, years ago I left university. Tell them later. That's tell yeah, them. That's why you see. Um, so if there's drunken people going past singing, if there's loud cars revving engines, wherever the house creaking, the fan drowns out most of that noise unless it's exceptionally loud. So that stops you waking up, which is incredible. Mm. My saying is, if you ain't woken up, you're still asleep. And it's that simple. <laughs> and that's the and key. That, that, that is one of the reasons, I think, as well, that people sleep on airplanes so much, because you've got that noise. You know, once they got over the initial, yeah, you, you have this, you have it, you, you see, you learn something new every Indeed. day from your, from your man in Marbella. But if you Any think about it, you, 
<laughs> yeah, it's, uh, but you think you get that adrenaline rush of going up in an airplane because it is an adrenaline rush, whether you like it or not. And that gets, you know, you, you, and you get that adrenaline pump, and then it goes, and then you've got that white noise of the jet engine, and you, there's nothing else to do. Um, so if, you, if you're not glued to the in flight movie or something blaring through your, your headphones, the white noise of the jets will actually that's where you see so many people who wouldn't normally sleep at that time of the day um nodding off during their during their flight and there's two other great things about the fans as well so if you're fear-headed like myself you'll find you get bit a lot by gnats and mosquitoes if you have a fan the mosquitoes and gnats can't fly over you because of the air turbulence speaking of the plane and the air turbulence of the plane <laughs> stops them landing we're going with the, ah. the, the plane theme stops them landing on you and you don't get bit and being bitten and the itchiness the next few nights will keep you awake so a fan is incredible from that and it doesn't stop there with the fan the full all right it's more this more on. is a fan yeah. would you believe keeps you cool and we want to be cool when we sleep yeah we do don't we this is the other thing because yeah. uh, you know I, 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 we think oh no hot water blanket and uh, toasty room but actually it's not good for our sleep pounds we want, we want the room to be around about 19 degrees, obviously give or take individual preferences, but it's around about 19 degrees. And uh, so in my bedroom, in fact, throughout the house, I have a hygrometer, which is a humidity monitor and a thermometer. So I always make sure the bed, <laughs> I know it's a bit much, uh, but the bedroom is around 19 degrees every single night, like clockwork. <laughs> it's it's all I'm, I'm, I'm ralph ralph i'm saluting you here but it that you know this is right i'm getting i'm you know my timer's gone off i got my thermometer going my humidifier's up the you know the fan is on i mean this is a major undertaking let's face it you know what once uh, the key thing about anything in life is if you start slowly and you just stack on top so one week you will say buy a thermometer then next well no actually you buy a fan first that's the most important. then you buy the thermometer you just do one thing at a time and within about 12 13 weeks you're like, whoa, I'm doing all these things. It's your conscious mind's not thinking about it because it's become on an unconscious habit. And you're yeah. like, oh, it's easy. And then you're sleeping like a dream. Easy. The, um, now, I'm not, I'm not going to, because it's Friday, okay? And it's a sunny day here in my bed and it's Friday night. Um, this, isn't, this isn't a personal question. Trust me on this one. Uh, but um if you have now now don't don't take this the wrong way with how, how i live my life okay yeah. but if if you're sleeping with someone or something let me qualify that okay because we all have nights like that but what i mean is for example <laughs> I, I i am the best cat dad in the world people send me t-shirts etc so i of course being of a certain age have cats and therefore the cat sleeps in the bed next to me and i can hear it purring and that again helps you send you off to sleep and having something warm and cuddly for by the expression next you can also help you sleep surely well, there's actually a chapter in my book all about sleeping with people well not sorry, actually that's it you are sleeping with them but not <laughs> you well hello you led me down that path uh, i know i, I know that. Um, yeah so okay so i'll reframe it in a bit more it's all right we're, we're grown-ups here we're grown-ups yeah, okay, we're grown -ups, you know? uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> if you have somebody lying next to you or in your case something lying next to you i i would actually say the temperature the movement the noise is going to wake you up and if you're not consciously aware of it it can still break your deep sleep and rem which is the really high quality restorative parts of one's sleep so I would, I actually make a point um, when I lived with my ex fiance I would have a separate room and we wouldn't sleep together every night. We'd sleep together some nights, but not every night because I value right. my sleep. And, I, and moving forward, when I live with a woman again, I will create the same environment. <laughs> huh. Very well put there, Ralph. Ex excellent. Very diplomatic. Be I, that was very that was honestly we should be sending you to some several world hot spots with it after a decent night's sleep what what do you hope ralph that people take apart from a decent night's rest what do you hope that people take from your book stop waking up tired my main objective is they wake up feeling refreshed and energized every day because i know from personal experience when i wake up in an amazing mood amazing levels of energy life's just amazing and then the days where i've been woken up or there's been I haven't got a good night's sleep. I'm miserable. I'm I can see myself getting triggered by things. I'm like, this is not me. 
So that sleep is so important. And I'm thinking of sleep more from the, even though I've written the book on longevity, I think of it more from the short term perspective of waking up tomorrow in a great mood, but actually it's the best thing for your health. So if you want to live a long life and really annoy the pension annuity companies, Get some good night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> the book is called Stop Waking Up Tired, The Beginner's Guide to Sleep. It's by Ralph Montague, who speaks to today. Ralph, if people want to find you online, don't look for you online, obviously, two hours before going to bed. But where can they find? Is there a website? Do you do the socials? Uh, where can people uh, track you down? Well, I my publisher actually kind of forced me into the socials in December. So I haven't been on social media for over a decade so at uh, long i've been dragged into the 21st century so i'm now on instagram uh, and twitter and linkedin i've been using linkedin though for years so i like linkedin uh and it's ralphie montague is instagram and then ralph Unsworth. wait is that ralphie with a y or with an ralphie, e by the way uh, with a y yeah uh, on instagram and then stop waking up tired is available at waterstones and amazon and if you want to learn lots of things about longevity, my website, which is the longevityclinic.co.uk, there's loads of free stuff on articles on there for people. Fabulous. And also it will also be available as a virtual download from our own virtual bookstore. This book is called Stop Waking Up Tired, The Beginner's Guide to Sleep. It's by Ralph Montague. Ralph, have a have a full on day at Cheltenham. I'm glad you're prepared. <laughs> prepared yes. for what's coming up that's preparation is the key it but is. Uh, uh it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you this morning ralph montague thank you so much for your time today